Oh, I didn't see you there. Hello, kings and queens and everyone in between. My name is JJ and welcome to SkinCraft. As you may have gleaned, today's topic is going to be red light therapy. I'm really excited to dive into this topic with you guys because there's so much to cover and there's so much more to red light and choosing the right device for you that you may not be aware of. So red light therapy works by introducing multiple wavelengths of varying degrees of red light into the skin. Clinical studies show that the reported benefits of red light therapy range anywhere from collagen induction to elastin formation, as well as anti-inflammatory benefits, healing benefits, and even pain relief. Red light has always been a staple in every clinic I've worked in. It's used to address several different concerns ranging from acne to wrinkles to hair loss and even pain. It's extremely helpful for healing post-surgery. It's very helpful post-laser services because it really helps to mitigate inflammation, increase and expedite healing, as well as take your elastin and your collagen production that much further. I try to use my LED device every night if I can. Red light therapy is also extremely helpful at increasing the ATP energy in the mitochondria of your cells. What does this mean to you? It means your cells will have the energy necessary to carry out the job they need to accomplish. Wow. But just how much power does your device have to have to actually drive these wavelengths into the skin where they belong? It seems many companies and consumers nowadays are worried more about the distance between the device and your skin as opposed to the power output. And the power output is infinitely more important than how close the LEDs are to your skin, within reason. Of course, you definitely want those LEDs to be as close as possible, but you don't necessarily need them touching your skin to achieve the goals that you're looking for. So the question is, is your device powerful enough to make a meaningful difference? I don't know. Let's get into it. Well, first we have to understand a bit of the science behind how LEDs are made. Within each LED device are many chips, and these chips power the LEDs. Now, each chip can house between one and four different LEDs on one power chip. However, there's only a limited amount of power per chip that can power those LEDs. So by taking the power from one chip, but then sharing it with other LEDs, may reduce the efficacy of each individual LED. Manufacturers will often do this to cut corners and save money. And to try to wow the client and make a sale, they pack as many different colors as they possibly can into one mask or device. And in order to do this, they often place multiple LEDs on one power chip, thus dividing the energy amongst all LEDs instead of having one strong LED. Part of what reduces the efficacy of multiple LEDs on one chip is the heat that they stimulate, potentially affecting performance. If you have one chip with multiple LEDs on it, they have to share the power, but it also gets pretty hot localized to that area and therefore can reduce the efficacy of all LEDs involved. This may reduce the benefit that the consumer can receive. Not all LED devices are created equal. Devices with individual chips for each LED often offer better heat dissipation and consistent results. And the more chips and individual LED lights placed within the device means less space in between each individual light, and that means more uniform coverage for you. Now let's circle back to the power output for an LED device. Is your device powerful enough to deliver the results that the company promises? Here, we're going to quickly break down how power is calculated. Oftentimes in medical aesthetics, you'll hear the word joules. In this case, joules are just as important as they are in a laser device. Companies have caught on that consumers are now aware of this, and some of them are starting to use marketing tactics that can deceive the consumer. What you're going to want to look for is the milliwatts per centimeter squared. This is going to give you a good idea of how many watts is actually powering your device. This will also help you measure individual joules per centimeter squared as well. But what some companies are doing now is advertising total joule output for the entire LED system. Instead of them offering the power output for individual LEDs, they're now giving you the total amount of power for the entire device, and this can be confusing. Some studies indicate that 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared is where you want to start at a minimum. Anything above that can yield an even better result. There are some very reputable companies that will divulge their entire spec sheet. If the company doesn't showcase the specs for the device that they're trying to sell, chances are there's a reason for that. The important takeaway here is to do your homework before you fall for any potentially deceptive marketing. Now I want to delve into the various colors and wavelengths that some devices offer that might benefit you. Let's quickly touch on blue light. Blue light is often used to combat cystic acne. Blue light targets the uppermost layer of the skin. It's really effective at mitigating acne-causing bacteria, helping to reduce breakouts and inflammation. And blue light therapy has always been a protocol of anti-acneic facials. And then there's amber or yellow light. This is one that isn't talked about enough in my opinion. Some of the benefits of amber light is that it penetrates slightly deeper than even some red light. It typically ranges between 570 and 590 nanometers. At this depth, it's really helpful at mitigating redness, soothing sensitivity, and has even shown some real promise for rosacea patients. And then of course, there's the infamous red light. 
there's a few different varying degrees of red light. There's light red light, regular red light, and then there's deep red light. And then of course there's infrared. What does this all mean to you? Standardized red light typically ranges from 620 nanometers on up to 700 nanometers. Some red light will reach all the way down into the dermis, the deepest portion of your skin. This is where it interacts with your fibroblast cells. Your fibroblast cells are solely responsible for generating new collagen seedlings as well as elastin seedlings. These are the two firming and tightening proteins in your skin, so it's of paramount importance that your light is powerful enough to hit these varying layers of skin. By upregulating your collagen synthesis as well as your elastin formation, red light has been shown to mitigate fine lines, wrinkles, and even improve texture. Then there's near-infrared light. This is going to penetrate the deepest, going up to 850 nanometers in the skin. Infrared light is typically helpful at mitigating pain in your muscles and joints, although some studies show that when blended with red light as well as amber light can really boost the results of your collagen synthesis as well as your elastin formation. Oh wow! Now my red light device actually houses multiple wavelengths as well as varying colors. I typically like to stick with the red spectrum because I'm focused on building collagen, elastin, and general overall wellness of the skin. My particular device has over 860 LEDs, varying different wavelengths and colors ranging from amber, light red, red, infrared, as well as deep red. I have a couple different variations from the same company. I have a handheld device that's perfect for travel or spot treatment, and then of course I have a panel. When shopping for a red light device, I did a lot of homework and I ultimately chose to go with LightStim. LightStim has clinical trials to back up the efficacy of their treatments, as well as making sure to house many LEDs so that you can get adequate coverage, as well as having an amazing power output. This was actually the first LED device that I've ever purchased. It's a handheld device. It's really easy to use. It plugs right into the wall. There's no battery pack in either of my devices because these devices are too powerful and it would drain the battery in such a short amount of time that you really wouldn't get much use out of it. And then of course I have my panel. What I like about this one is that you can get through a full anti-aging treatment in as little as 16 minutes. It also features blue light. And if I'm breaking out, it's actually really helpful and they're quick 12 minute sessions. Now I'm not telling you to run out and buy a light stem because honestly, they're quite pricey. They'll range anywhere from a couple hundred dollars for a handheld device, up to $2,500 for a panel, and up to over $6,000 for a professional pro panel that you'd usually see in clinic. So which device is right for you? Chances are you may already have an LED device somewhere in your home, but you might be looking to upgrade or looking for additional add-ons to supplement your home care regimen. Here are a few things to consider when looking to purchase an LED device. Number one, I would ensure that when looking into an LED device that you're getting one powerful enough to be able to provide the results that the company claims. You can typically find these things within a device's spec sheet to ensure that the power output is up to par. Number two, what are your goals? Are you looking to combat acne? Are you looking to reverse the hands of time? Or are you looking for overall skin health and wellness? Answering this question is important because you want to make sure that whatever device you decide to invest in has the most amount of the LEDs that you're looking for, whether that be blue, red, or a blend. I myself typically skew towards the anti-aging benefits, so I want to make sure that it has as many varying red light wavelengths as humanly possible. Three, do you need a portable device? Or are you able to lie down and have a stationary treatment? I myself don't mind lying down and having a stationary treatment with my panel. However, I know some people will want to be able to move around and continue through their daily life while getting their treatment through an LED mask. Which brings me to four. Purchase whatever device that you're going to actually use. One of the worst things you can do is invest in a device and never use it. So to recap, the power output of your LED device is crucial for an effective treatment. Choosing the right mask means choosing a mask that houses the LEDs that you need for whatever concern you're trying to address. And last but not least, don't forget that I'm here for you. If you have any questions pertaining to red light or need any further clarification on any of the topics that we've discussed today, feel free to leave a comment and I'll certainly be sure to respond and help you out.